welcome back to the World of Skimmer podcast, a podcast on the Skimmer book series with three books published now, Skimmer Deep Sea, Skimmer Harvest and Skimmer Mine, which you can see in the background behind me. And of course, in the not too distant future, Skimmer Tic Tac or book four in the series coming out. So a world within which deep sea mining occurs in 2040, at least that's the backdrop. And around that we have a plot about the rise of AI or two types of AI and the use of acquired UFO technology within the deep sea mining industry from supposed crash retrievals. So at the moment we're continuing with our characters or looking at our characters in the series and this time I want to talk about the character Stella uh, as one of the crew on board Nara's skimmer. Now these skimmers have a crew of about six that uh, monitor the system artificial intelligence and the drones used in deep sea mining operations collecting manganese nodules from our 4,000 meters below from the seabed. Uh, now the crew is quite important. Uh, you might think, well, why do they need crews, crews at all? But the key is that they always need to monitor, service, maintain, and fix these semi-autonomous uh, mining extracts. If it weren't for that, they perhaps wouldn't have a crew. But there is another agenda going on. Uh, you might think, why are they using drones uh, instead of a riser column, which would be much more efficient and have much higher volumes of nodules coming up from the seabed. But there's a reason behind that to do with AI and the use of these overdrives or this retrofitted UFO technology under the guise of Project Cygnus. Now the crew's aware of some of that and Jesse, as security and communications officer, is aware of a significant amount of, of what the true agenda is. But in terms of Stella and her role on board, now she's a typical Australian, uh, short blonde hair, about five foot four, and semi-solid athletic build. Uh, she's got a very bubbly, outgoing personality, which you will come to see uh, as, as you read the series. Uh, in terms of her uh, beach life or fashion, so she's very much a beach girl back at the academy, uh, where the, there's a beach next to the uh, accommodation or villas on, on the grounds and very much into her fashion now of course at sea there's an absence of fashion and she does get hassled a lot about that uh, in terms of her vogue by some of the other crew members uh, in terms of her actual role on board now she's the extract mine, mining drone technician involved in their maintenance and operation and has a lot to do with uh, keeping their systems going and their coding updated and relevant uh, to make sure that they operate at maximum effectiveness uh, during their mining operations. So she keeps them going, but she's always complaining, complaining about how inefficient the, uh, the technology is, uh, and that's why they need to be on board to keep uh, monitoring them when they deploy the communication streamer and use a laser technology or qubit technology to signal between the communication streamer and the extract mining drones as they go up and down from the seabed 4,000 meters below. So uh, in terms of crew dynamics, she's very integral to social cohesion on board of the group uh, as, as, as a crew, as a member of the crew. And I can talk about that in terms of how she interacts with the other characters, uh, for example, Stella and Johnny. Now, Johnny is also very outgoing, so he's the he's the uh, Tongan Maori on board, and the they, the dynamic set up between them uh, helps maintain crew morale on board because they're both quite jovial characters and always hassling each other and having a go at each other, both in terms of their personality uh, and their role on board. And that, that the crew buys into that and finds it quite funny uh, sometimes and also over the top sometimes and a bit too much to handle so they can be seen as, as too much to handle and Jesse's always got an oversight on that in terms of what goes on on board and how, how the crew feels about that and what happens when things go wrong and those personality traits or personality types have to be dealt with. Now in terms of Chang, 
her Stella's um, does quite well coping with Chang because Chang's quite misogynistic and chauvinist towards women given his cultural background and his family history and but and, and generally just an angry person and tends to take it out on the crew but Stella uh, in particular uh, he looks down on and, and Stella doesn't take any of that personally she, she handles it quite well uh, and is quite forgiving of Chang and almost mothering she's quite kind of the mother of the crew and always looking after their well-being or looking out for them emotionally uh, and, and you can see that come out with Connor because of course Chang, Connor gets bullied a lot by Chang uh, and has, takes everything literally because he's on the autism spectrum so in terms of his being able to read emotional body language he finds that very difficult and Stella's quite understanding of that and quite supportive of, of Connor in his role as information officer and the fact that he gets uh, bullied a lot by Chang because Chang's quite jealous of Connor's achievements and and his discovery uh, using the help of Psy and natural and natural language processing of the AI or the sphere he develops and that he becomes quite obsessed with that so Stella's quite understanding now under under pressure or when things go wrong uh, Stella can be overly reckless and just plunge straight into situations uh, and doesn't help herself into in that regard so the crew has to get her out of the situation she becomes immersed in uh, because she's quick to get involved without thinking first about what she's actually going to do and you can see that in the first book where things go wrong on the skimmer and she jumps in without thinking to try and come up with a solution or solve some, solve some quite tense situations and gets herself in trouble and then the crew has to get her out of that situation and then in hindsight she realized she was a bit hasty in making uh, a judgment call uh, that compromised her own safety uh, and and possibly the safety of the crew and the skimmer thinking she was doing the right thing and, and things do work out with the help of, of the rest of them and coming up with solutions but the risk is there that could have been averted in the first place uh, and in, in terms of crew dynamics very quick to jump in as well uh, and, and often mostly that works out okay as well um, but does tend to um, not always facilitate the best outcome without the help of the crew in other words if the crew weren't there to pick up uh, the pieces of her enthusiasm to be involved and 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 help the crew and solve situations between them uh, things might not always work out for the better so she's always wanting to make things right between the crew and everyone else and also when conflict arises now in terms of conflict uh, she often takes a back seat when things get more and more tense as the series move on, moves on and you get into books 3, 4 and then 5 and 6 uh, she doesn't like the physical confrontation that involves when the conflict arises with the protagonist Sue and the harvester and what goes on in the area with the sea hunters and all that dynamic so she'll take a back seat behind that and she's, she's very well trained as a medic in terms of first aid so she's more fixing up or pulling together the pieces or the fallout of what happens when thing goes wrong for example Johnny gets shot at and he gets injured uh, so she doesn't like that front line role for example like Jesse who's very well trained in self defense and martial arts and very confident, confident of her own physical abilities to engage in that situation uh, alongside Johnny when things go wrong and they get confronted with uh, the potential for their themselves to be harmed uh, or the crew or other people around them so Stella sits there in the background in a support role in that regard trying to assist uh, and Johnny he tends to get in trouble a lot when that happens because he's he's very confident and of course he's quite solid and robust and big so he's at the forefront of a lot of that dynamic as as the plot evolves and things play out behind the scenes and become evident through to book four and then book five and book six and the protagonist Sue takes a liking to try and, and confront this crew and acquire what they have at the expense of their own lives and their own safety uh, and and of course undermining everything going on in the area and compromising 
the ability of people to work in the area. So we'll deal with Sue later on. So in terms of other crew members, we've still got a, a, a few to talk about, and we're going to talk about Ying Wei next, and then in another podcast, Jonah, and finally Sue, the great protagonist. So I'll leave Stella and her role at that for now, and we look forward to talking about these other characters in the next three podcasts. And then finally, to close out talking about characters, we'll talk about the Sea Hunters and the role of Max and Alex in the Sea Hunter unit and Cam, some other um, minor characters, but minor characters with key roles. And Lee on the Harvester, of course, and now his role changes as Sue, the protagonist, becomes more and more involved and, and takes over. And of course, Dr. Sign Chang and Ying Wei's father and chief operations officer of Globe Corp Mining. So we'll have a good look at him as well and how that dynamic affects Nara and his crew, uh, his relationship with his sister on the harvester, and of course, Globe Corp Mining, and then Exit Academy, Jonah, and what goes on in the area. So that family is very much tied up in everything that goes on. Uh, in terms of crew dynamics and what happens going into book five and book six and the ultimate end game when the crew has to come together and each member of the crew has quite a clearly defined role uh, that matches their personality type which comes out as we get and get towards the end of the series and you can see that in the dynamics of the relationships and what goes on as we reach the climax in book six. So I'll leave it at that for now. And I look forward to talking about Ying Wei in the next podcasts. So hope to see you soon again.